There is a place of God's grace that you can walk in every day. And I call this teaching daily grace for daily living. And if you will seek God in this area of his grace, you will receive his grace for your everyday life. Now what that word everyday life or phrase everyday life pertains to is your life in Christ. The life that God has predestined for you to live. The life that God has predestined for you. The, the path that he has predestined for you to walk in. As a matter of fact, I'm going to read Ephesians 2 and 10 in the Amplified Bible. Wasn't planning to, but it explains it in a way uh, uh, that you will... Uh, be able to understand it's a little bit wordy, but I mean, if you will study it, if you don't have the Amplified Bible, get on the computer, look it up on BibleGateway.com, Ephesians 2 and 10, and click on the Amplified Translation. Uh, it says, for we are God's own handiwork, his workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew, that we may do those good works which God predestined, planned beforehand, for us, taking paths for he prepared ahead of time, that we should walk in them, living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. Notice the good life that we are all seeking God for is the last thing in this spectrum. The first thing says that we have to be recreated in Christ, born anew, born again, then recreated in Christ, then begin to walk, do those good works which God has planned beforehand for us, and then take paths which God has prepared ahead of time. Then the good life materializes around us in that area of obedience and in that area of um. Uh, adhering to God's word. It's not about, and as long as people are quick fix Christians, I want a quick blessing to, to undo this situation that I've created over the years because I haven't been obedient in the first place. I want a, I want a quick blessing to clean up my mess. You know, and as long as we'll, we'll always be subject to these grace gimmicks. Send me this and God's gonna, God's gonna. Send me this and God's gonna, God's gonna. Well, this is my opinion to this God's gonna stuff. And I've heard some very um, powerful pastors preach on what God's gonna, God's gonna do. And, and my brothers and sisters in Christ that I'm talking to are always saying, I'm gonna wait and see what God's gonna do. I'm gonna wait and see what God's gonna do. And it really made God look like a procrastinator to me. I'm saying, okay, God, you God, how come you ain't doing all this these people are waiting on? But this verse in 2 Peter chapter 1, um, let's read verse 3 and verse 4. It says, for his divine power has bestowed upon us all things that are requisite and suited to life and godliness through the full personal knowledge of him who call us by and to his own glory and excellence. By means of these, he has bestowed on us his precious and exceedingly great promises so that through them you may escape by flight from the moral decay, rottenness, and corruptiveness lust and greed, and become sharers, partakers of the divine nature. Okay? Now, it said God has already given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. The only thing is we haven't gotten around to uh, figuring yet that that word life means, is from the Greek word zoe, which means the God kind of life, or the a life that is uh, impregnated with God, vitality, and animation. It's that purpose life. And we, when we begin to live that purpose life, we will see it ain't about God doing something, but us becoming a partaker on what God has already done. Did you hear that? 
It's not about what God's going to do. It's about us becoming a partaker in what he has already done. If I could say it in another language, I would say it because so many Christians need to hear this. I'm still hearing us. God going to do. I'm waiting to see what God going to do. Well, you and then the preachers, if you this do this, God going to, God going to. If you do this, God going to. No, 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 no. God has already done it, and we need to become a partaker of it. Okay? All right. Now, I have a few verses that I want to read. Um, it, um, it's talking about God's grace. But before that, let me, let me validate what I'm talking about. Daily grace for daily living. Uh, in the uh, account of Galatians uh, 5, uh, verse 16, it, it was saying that these Galatians Christians, and also check Galatians 5 and 24. It says, these, well, Galatians 5 and 4. I'm sorry, Galatians 5 and 4. These Galatian Christians had fallen from grace in the sense they had deprived themselves of the ministry of the Holy Spirit in which he ministered grace to them, daily grace for daily living. Okay? The Holy Spirit ministers to you daily grace for daily living the galatian christians we are when we get to that account we think about they you know they were backslidden but they weren't backslidden out of church they were backslidden from their uh yielding to the holy spirit's ministry in their life and until we become knowledgeable of the holy spirit's ministry in our life we will be destitute of God's grace because the Holy Spirit's ministry in our lives is the conduit that brings God's grace from the throne room into our lives. Daily grace for daily living. That's the grace we need to receive from God and be happy with. He told Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. Uh, when we think about all the materialistic blessings, of course, that is in God's grace too. But that's part of the good life that we want after we are supposed to be recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew, and then doing those good works which God has predestined for us to do, then walking paths which he has uh, predestined for us to walk. Now, I'm going to tell you from personal experience, that has worked for me. That has worked tremendously, and it is working right now in my life. My wife and I have experienced God's grace in every area that we walk in that he has predestined for us to walk in. In our personal lives, our personal lives are enhanced as we go about doing his will to enhance the lives of others. That is where you're going to find daily grace for daily living. And I got a, a chapter in the book of Isaiah that we're going to go over on part two of this that will really let you see it in actuality. And God is saying, there's not some minister saying, send me something and God gonna, God gonna. God is saying himself what he will do and we will have a definition of what daily grace for daily living is. Is really about okay let's get out of these grace fast let's get out of these quick fix grace gimmicks that will not prove themselves in your life and like a lot of Christians it will probably turn you away and make you more worldly in church than you are Christ like in church I always say we need to be more in Christ at church rather than at Christ in church. Okay? Now, let's look at Psalms 103. And um, I, I would like to read all the uh, first five verses. It says, Bless affectionately, gratefully praise the Lord, O my soul, and all that is deepest within me. Bless His holy name. 
Bless affectionately, gratefully, praise the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not one of all his benefits. Now, he's going to uh, give us some benefits here. He forgives everyone of all your iniquities. That's give forgiveness. That's a grace that, that we take advantage of. Who heals each one of all your diseases. Healing is a grace of God that we can receive in our lives. Who redeems your life from the pit and corruption. Who, all right, the redemption of our lives. Who beautifies, dignifies, and crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercy. Who satisfies your mouth, your necessity and desire at your personal age and situation with good so that your mouth renewed is like the Excuse me, <laughs> mouth. So that your youth, a lot of us like need to renew our mouth, me for one, is renewed and is like the eagle, strong, overcoming, and soaring. Okay? So God is saying here, uh, I'm telling you here about his benefits. Notice it didn't say nothing that was materialistic at this time. I believe that if we receive these benefits first, the materialistic things come into play as it says here, as it says, uh, your necessity and desire at your personal age and situation. In your maturity, your age and your maturity and your walk with God and in the situations that you come into in your walk with God, God gives you, he satisfies your mouth with the things that you need. I want to read something that's very um, touching by uh, Solomon here in um, chapter 30 uh, of the 30th division of um, Proverbs. He said, uh, verse 8, remove far from me falsehood and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with the food that is needful for me. Now, one exposition I heard on this from a, uh, one of uh, the, my favorite uh, speakers, Randall Warley, he said that Saul was Paul, uh, Solomon was not asking God, just give me enough to live every day. Just give me a pen, just enough to get by on. Solomon was asking God, Lord, provide me with that which is needful to do your will. That is what we should be looking for God for. That is what we should be seeking God for. And in doing so, it's like in Matthew 6 and 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and things will be added. Don't become a thing-seeking Christian.